Well, it's Addy and Daddy time. We're getting ready here. We're just waiting for Amy to finish putting a couple of babies of hers away that she likes. I had to go pick up. Whoa, where are you going? I had to go pick up uh, LD's Patrick today up in Rockwood. That's a horse we purchased yesterday. I told everybody he was going to sell out quick, and he did. Uh, it only compounded by the fact that Airstrike was claimed for, uh, from us last... I don't even know who got Airstrike. Oh, did they say it? Uh, he was claimed from us last night at Mohawk. A little surprised, but maybe not. I mean, we gave 10000 US for, for for him. Shipped him over here. He did win a race. Uh, a leg of that pop-up series. And then um, was outmatched in the final and raced where I thought was the right place for him last night at 15. Um, it looked like he... <laughs> what are you doing? It looked like he wanted, uh, he didn't want any more of the front three anyway, but raced good and was claimed. I think all around it was a good, uh, it was a good deal. F financially, it was a good deal. What are we watching? Pod Troll? Yeah. Okay. Financially, it was a good deal. Um, and for the stable, it was a good deal too. I mean, where's, which one's Paw Patrol? Hey. Yeah. Which one's pa Paw Patrol? Which one? You show me. What about Peppa? Yeah. No, we're off the Peppa Pig now? Yeah. Okay, you take that back and you figure out which one you want. All right? My goodness, it got hot in here all of a sudden. It's a lot warmer today. This weather is... Actually, it's not good for the horses, so we were going really easy with them today. Plus, uh, the temperature is plus 13. So, I can do this. Give me a second. Uh... Uh, I don't know. It's around 70, I guess. I think. Is that right? 70? Oh, yeah. You got to turn that down. I don't mind. I forgot how much I hated Peppa Pig till right now. Let me see this. I got to turn it down. Peppa Pig drives me crazy. Tastes great. But its voice drives me crazy. We'll get some Peppa Pig in this tomorrow for breakfast. <laughs> um, so... The opening video this week, I wasn't going to wait till Sunday to watch uh, Lindy race and Yes race. It's just impossible for me to get the videos out and watch them race. So good luck to everybody tomorrow. Um, you know, certainly not the end of things. I think we made a great purchase with Tour de Lindy. I think he's going to have some luck in the final. And then we have places to race him after. So it's a good storyline all the way through for a horse like Tour de Lindy. Uh, yes, uh what more to say about yes i think he's a real good horse you know honestly i watched the open at the meadowlands last night and i'm like geez you know we have one maybe two horses that could do in there they go for a lot of money but don't know if we're ready yet to send him back to the east coast still a little bitter taste in her mouth from last year but a great taste from the year before so all cards on the table everything's still uh, open but at the same time for right now i think yes fits a, a great class on sunday as I said, we had a claim last night in Airstrike. We had a purchase made in LD's Patrick. Now, LD's Patrick is a three-year-old father, Patrick. He's a lot bigger than I thought he was. I literally just picked him up. Uh, there's no stalls left in uh, Amy's barn, so we went up to Jason's barn, um, which is fine because Jason had a stall ready. My original plan was to put him in Amy's until we figured out where he was going to go. Is he going to Jason's? Is he going to Harry's? Mario's? I don't know. Um, but he ended up in Jason's barn in Airstrike's old stall. So the plan with him, uh, why it was so important to get an Elmer's a two horse also was that um, we had no problem getting so and so race last night. Made a break. James learned a very important lesson with her. We'll talk about that in a minute. He thought that she's perfectly fine when uh, when he raced her first two starts, and then last night he got a little taste of what so and so can be really made of if you screw around with her. He said that. Um, the gate, the way it is at Mohawk, parks up by the fence, and then as they call one minute, they start moving the gate down towards the middle of the track and open the wings. So when James drove so and so before, he put her on the on the gate and followed the gate down, and the gate opened up. Away you go. This time he had the two hole, followed it down, and as the gate opened up, he ripped her down to the two hole. And as she was going down there, she kind of threw her head and flipped out and threw it. Had a little temper tantrum. I told him she's got a very very tender mouth on her. You just can't be ripping and tearing. With this, with this filly, so uh, cost us some money by the looks of the way the race was, but that's okay. He made us money two weeks ago, and now that he knows what so and so can be like, beware. And I think um, I'll pitch last night's race simply because 
it was a little bit of a learning experience for James and hopefully Sue can uh, can go back to the way she was her last two starts which was behaving well uh, I'm gonna take her to the vet and LD's Patrick to the vet on Monday just to make sure everything's all right now the plan is well, I had a call from the race office ah are your boots clean good girl get in uh, I had a call from the race office on Thursday saying trying to get a hold of Jason uh, is there any way Uh, uh, from the race office saying, is there any way so and so can race again on Monday? And I said, if I owned her myself and we're talking about a, you know, a claimer or something, maybe, but this is a nice little filly that I like. I can't race her Thursday, Friday back Monday. It just wouldn't be fair to her. So that's how short they were. The non winners of two. I think they ended up with eight horses in that class on Monday. This is why it was even more of an, an easy purchase for, for LDs Patrick. I know he shows brakes. A lot of people saying, what about the brakes? What about the brakes? I don't know. I haven't driven him. I haven't trained him. We're going to tinker with him. We're going to tab him to the vet on Monday, tinker with him. And the plan is to race him a week from Monday at Mohawk and that now we're just two. So that is why we picked up LDs Patrick. As I said to everybody that messaged me last night for shares, you really got to get through Wend Wendy and Kelly. I can't populate the shares from the, uh, from the other end of the site. I knew that he would sell out quickly, so I just asked everybody to message Kelly and Wendy so they can get a, a time-stamped email into them, and there were people that got shut out on L. Lee's Patrick. That's just the way it shook down. Uh, well, as I said, we're going to have more horses. What are you doing, babe? Daddy? We're gonna, what? There's a Sonic 2 coming out. I know. Okay. I don't really think that's information for the video, do you think? <laughs> no. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, LD's Patrick was important, as I said, relax, there's going to be a lot. What I'd like to get, you know, for many of you, you know, maybe some of you don't, we bid on a fairly expensive horse not that long ago, a pacer. I'd like to get a, an open pacer type, or even, even again, you can never have too many open trotters. Um, I suspect in that January sale at the Meadowlands, there'll be, there'll be one or two in there, pretty big ticket items. And we'll take a good look at at, uh, at what's going on there. Not to mention that $40,000 claiming series is coming up Monday at Mohawk. Uh, not Monday, I'm sorry. Rewind. It's coming up January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, something like that, at Mohawk. In which case, if it makes sense, I really don't know what's going to be in this series. I mean, I'm not just going to grossly overpay for a horse so we can race it in a series. It's ridiculous. Show me a horse worth the money, put him in that class, and we'll claim him. But it has to be worth the money, right? Right. Yeah, it has to just be worth the money, right? Right. Right. <laughs> so, that's what we got coming up. Uh, 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 don't, hey, I'm doing a video turkey butt. Um, so that's what we have coming up, is the claiming series and then that sale in January um, at the Meadowlands. We'll see what's for sale in there. So, as many of you know, our open house has been pushed back to the 24th. I actually like this. I like this. I know a couple of our clients, you know, are like, oh, you know, we got some stuff on the go. Well, one, for sure. Uh, got some stuff on the go. We're going to be busy on, on Christmas Eve. Well, guys, it's Christmas Eve, 8.30 till 1 o'clock in the afternoon, right? If you got to travel, not many people. We're trying to get everybody done as quickly as we can for the open house. But you should be able to tune in if you want to. If you want to pop by and say hello, feel free to also. And then also... Um, we'll have the replays of everything for everybody. But as it as it is on the 24th, no one races on the 24th, so we're going to have a, a lot of the eyes of the industry on us, which I think is pretty cool. That's what I like. So um, the 24th is, although it's a little cumbersome, it's the day before Christmas, but at the same time, I think... Um, Dad, this is how I have it planned out. We're going to do the open house, and then when we're done, we're going to... Do last minute Christmas shopping and then we're gonna relax. I like your idea. I can't disagree. I love fish. I love fish. Oh yeah? I love Who's your favorite horse? <laughs> Potato. Hey, who do you feed the carrots to? Tigo. Who? Why Tigo? Why Tigo? <laughs> I like the Yes. So, uh, I like the open house being on Christmas Eve. Well, see, it's totally different for us. This is the first year. As you guys can imagine, the reason it's so important to have this open house at the first part of December was to get as many shares as I could sold. We sold a lot of shares already, and although there is still a little bit of a gap, it won't be that hard to bridge this year. So it allowed us to leave some shares on the on the table, leave some shares on the site for people to look at. So when the horses are out there, and you guys know exactly how it's going to be, sure, 
And some of the horses are going to look very, very good. I can tell you a few that looked tremendous yesterday. There's going to be a lot of horses look very, very good on the drone videos on Christmas Eve. And there's going to be a lot of people looking at something. I'm sure there's going to be people out there outrageously pricing their horses, but there are going to be some fair prices for horses. So it's an opportunity for the market to be a little aggressive on Christmas Eve also for Santa. So... We got the claim this week of airstrike last night. We get the purchase of LD's Patrick. We get the open house being moved to the 24th. I went with a... T hey, hey, you. I'm going to do a whole yearling video for you guys. I'm going to tell you where I see them right now. We got some horses that looked very, very good. It's pretty hard to impress me. I'm an optimistic person. It's pretty hard to impress me this time of year. You just have to go out and go do your work and do it very well. I was floored yesterday by a couple of horses and how good they actually were. You know what I'm going to do? I just thought about it. There are two people that are here every day. Mary and Jerry. Mary and Jerry are here every single day. I'm going to reach out to you, Mary and Jerry. And I'm going to ask you to do a video at Christmas. You see everyone every day. The days I'm in Ohio. The days I'm away. The days I'm here. The days we train. You see the horses if they act up. Some of them might fall down or kick or be bad or be good. But you see it all. So I'm going to ask Mary and Jerry to do a little video for us. So you can get a bird's eye view. Completely unbiased bird's eye view. Well, maybe a little biased because Mary and Jerry own horses too. But a completely semi-unbiased view of uh, of how the horses look. I think that'll be cool for everybody. So I'll reach out to, to Mary and Jerry and see if they want to do that. Um, as I said, the claiming okay. series coming up in January. Yeah, but you don't see the horses, babe. The claiming series is coming up in January. Uh, the sale is coming up. We talked about that. We'll bring that up later on, right? There's no need to talk about that today. Those are two big days coming up for us after Christmas, after the new year. We have that claiming series in January, and we have um, the sale in, in the Meadowlands. Now, I guess rewind a little bit. We do have a claiming series going on right now, and I'll take a look at those horses this week. There's going to be allowances on them, and they are maybe going to be overpriced. That's my biggest thing with these ser with these claiming series. I like them. They're cool. The one at Northfield was good because that was, for the most part, what they were. I like the progressive side. If you want to pay more on the second week after you get to see them on the first week, great. I, I don't mind that. But if you're telling me to give you $40,000 for an Ontario bred four-year-old that has allowance, show me the value. And if you can show me the value in one of those horses, they will be coming down to one of these shed rows, I can tell you right now. Now, we got some three-year-olds ready to go. Rose Above It will qualify next Friday. I didn't get into detail. I like Rose Above It. You guys know that. I've always liked him. Do I think he's a killer? No, he's never going to race in the elite lop, but he's a nice colt. He and does. He won't. And um, I trained him by himself in 2-1 and a piece, 2-2. Two, two. Last half, 57 and a bit at Northfield by himself the other day. Going to make one little shoeing change with him. He's off to the qualifiers Friday. Now, coincidentally, I also trained by himself. And you might say, why are you training them by themselves? Because I wanted to know what they feel like and what they look like. Prairie Fire looked great. 2-2-3, two, two, and three, last half 58. He feels like he's a week behind Rose above it. So he's not going to qualify this Friday. We might school him. Might school him this Friday in 2-1 again. Might get James to go with him. But Rose above it is going behind the gate and qualifying on Friday. Very happy there. A ton of the other three-year-olds come in. Tie one on. Of Tom. Purple Aura. Sweet on Pete. Uh, all those three-year-olds came back in. The horses in Kentucky will be coming back next week. I'm about to make a phone call when I get off this video uh, to Doyle. We have one unbeatable camp. Amy is her lobbying hard for him to come back here. So, hey, do you what about cake? Do you like cake? The There's horsey cake. cake? There's cake. What has he got? Look at me. Has he got a white blaze on his face? Yeah, cake. 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 So, it's unbeatable camp. Addy calls him cake. So, he's coming back. Uh, to here, I think. It'll be my little Christmas present to my wife. We're going to bring Unbeatable Kemp back here next Dad, week. it's not really a Christmas present if she knows. Uh, well, she'll only know if she watches the video. Or if you tell her. I'll tell her. Um, Garden State Dio and uh, Blue Bayou Dio can go to Northfield Park. Uh, the reason is, here's the thing. We're training these three-year-olds back. I would rather train them on one of the best half-mile tracks in the world. I can go over there. Jason's going over there next week. I can go over there the week after Christmas. Slide over for a Wednesday or a Saturday. Train the horses up, and away you go. There's no problems then. Then I know where they're at. And for the first month, they're just jogging. Just jog them on the main track. Keep them quiet and let them get their cardio up. And that's really all these three-year-olds need at the start anyway. So those horses are under Lauren's care in Ohio. 
Um, and then, as I said, I want to talk about the babies in, in our yearling video this week. We did get training miles. I put a stopwatch on all the ones I went with. Uh, I think you'll be surprised. I think you'd be surprised, one, who the fastest yearling is in the barn right now. Not only just by time, but I don't think anybody really wants a piece of this filly, and I didn't see this coming. I knew she'd speed, I knew she had talent, but I didn't know she was squared around and trotting as perfectly as she was. So that, it was a shock to me. Easy mile in like 248. We went that's like 10 seconds almost faster than most of the horses, and I could have went lots more. I think you'd be surprised which horse that was. Also, a number of the horses, uh, I didn't get a chance to go with Tactor. Amy's pretty protective of Tactor. But I'm going to go with him on Wednesday. Una Madonna, I went with her. She's about two weeks behind, maybe three weeks behind a couple of horses. But the ones I'm talking about were purchased two or three weeks before her. So it's really not that shocking. Uh, again, having the open house on uh, Christmas Eve gives some of those horses a chance to catch up also. So it is a big deal. It's a very big deal, especially since they're very young in their... Um, in their maturity, very young in their their training, in their learning how to do their work. So every day, every week definitely counts and moving it back two weeks, you'll see quite a difference from the horses that trained here yesterday to the way they look on the 24th. So another reason that I'm not that, that concerned about it, it should be a great day for all of us. It's a Christmas cheer. It is the best time on the entire calendar. Don't worry about horse racing, just in our lives. Christmas, I am a Christmas person. I'm not the guy that decorates the tree, and I don't even like putting up decorations. Just the spirit of the holidays, I love. And his birthday. My birthday's on the first, yeah, but yeah. I don't really care that much. I got you a present. We all got you. I saw that. But uh, most importantly, as I said, oh, I love that? the Christmas series. Do you, what do you like Grinch. about Christmas? What do you like about Christmas? You like presents? Yeah. Yeah? Mwah. Do you want to say bye bye, everybody? Bye bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Wow, that was a good Merry Christmas. So that's your opening video. We still got tons to talk about: racehorses, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, and most importantly, a big video this week for the yearlings. We'll be back in just a minute.